Hey everyone, welcome to the Jazz Scene, giving you an in-depth look at the music and stories of the musicians performing on our stages here in Columbus. On today's episode of the Jazz Scene, we are joined by Andrew Patton, who is the main contributor and operator for jazzcolumbus.com, which is a website that was designed to support the local jazz scene here in Columbus by providing a calendar of events and interviews and updates on the musicians that are in the scene here in Columbus and all things related to jazz in this city. So welcome and thanks for joining us. Hi, Zach. Thanks for having me. Um, so jazzcolumbus.com, as I mentioned, is a resource really to the community that was started um seems like just to become first and foremost a calendar so that people could log on and see what's going on in in the city is that true yeah it was founded by mark subel and i think the domain dates back to even 2006 but Mm -hmm. i think 2009 was about when he had content and you know a website people could visit and yes the first primary goal was getting a calendar together that people could go to one place and hopefully find out about every show, every jazz show in town. And so so Mark started the website in 2009 and operated it for a while, and then you jumped in. So tell me a little bit about sort of how Mark got the website going and how you came into the fold with the website. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, he following through on his goal as far as getting a calendar get together and then um, getting uh, press releases, putting out articles about shows upcoming and different things going on whenever he got news items and that sort of thing. As far as my involvement, I was, I've done some writing, music writing over the last 10 years, mostly for uh, donewaiting.com, which was a more general Columbus music and international music website that is now defunct. And then when that ended in 2013, I was sort of looking for another project and I'd been aware, I'd been following Jazz Columbus for a while at that point and I uh, reached out to Mark and um, got started slowly, but then... Um, in that fall of 2013, started writing a weekly column. It went out uh, Wednesday nights and still goes out Wednesday nights. So that was my sort of avenue into getting more regularly involved. And then that sort of grew to writing more articles in the next couple of years. And then when Mark's time got crunched by life, by having a baby and many his many other projects, uh, last year he reached out to me about taking it over, about if I couldn't do it, then it was going to basically go away. So I certainly have enjoyed what I've done and think it's valuable and enjoy doing it. So I want to keep it going. So that's basically where we are now. Yeah. And, and it's definitely a resource that serves the community in so many different ways. As you scroll through the pages of jazzcolumbus.com, not only do you have the calendar that is sort of the one of the main things that you can see and you can scroll through at any given moment, and you really find quickly that there's music almost seven nights a week here in Columbus that would fit the jazz description. But you also see a listing of venues and a listing of current musicians with bios. And so it really kind of is the catch-all for anything happening in the jazz scene. But one of the things that you've also started to do more is interview musicians that are on the scene doing creative things or uh, debuting a residency at Dick's Den, let's say, or somebody or somewhere like that. And so tell me a little bit about the interview process. And uh, was that something that came about when you were on or was it something that already existed? And, and what has it kind of evolved to for you in terms of the importance of continuing to do those interviews with musicians? Yeah, it was actually the interview series was actually Mark's idea when we were working together mm-hmm. on the site and, uh, you know, of a way of, you know, generating interesting content that all of this stuff takes time and, you know, with my own <laughs> full-time job and <laughs> everything else going on. It's, it's uh, hard to spend as much time as I'd like to on some of these things. So this basically came around as an email interview series where we had a set group of questions. We would send them to musicians and they would send back their answers. You know, trying to keep it going. I hopefully it gets some more <laughs> momentum and interest on it this fall. It's been a little quieter over the summer. But, um, yeah, looking to keep that going and uh, find more about our local musicians. Yeah, absolutely. And just looking, you know, just on the homepage right now of, of uh, jazzcolumbus.com, you see a listing of what's got to be like... I don't know, probably 12 different artists all happening on Friday, September 9th here in town. Uh, Various places like the Lincoln Cafe and the Hot Times Festival that's coming up in Dick's Den. And so through your experience, you know, specifically working with this project, I know it's probably caused you to go out to more shows. Um, And I know that you write some concert reviews 
um, and you do some commentary on what's going on. Give me sort of your assessment of what the jazz scene is like right now and what you're noticing out uh, in terms of the musicianship and also the different creativity and just kind of give me your overall view of the scene as a whole. You know, I definitely uh, <laughs> feel good about the jazz scene. Um, I think there's uh, plenty of good places to uh, see jazz and many great musicians. Um, and I think lately there's been, I think there'd be a little more expansion towards other parts of the city. I think, you know, sometimes it can get centered, you know, Dick's Den is a hub and, you know, sort of in Natalie's and Brothers Drake, so, sort of like a hen- high street, you know, north side of town sometimes. Maria's Lounge and uh, Reynoldsburg, it, well, they're in, currently in transition already. They, I guess they're already moving to a new location. Mm-hmm. But uh, And then they also own the Idle a Wild Bar, which is having some jazz on the east side, too. And also with Jazz 98 Radio Station, their Jazz Brew Concert Series, bringing jazz mostly to Whitehall now, which has yeah. not, not been a town to see much jazz in historically, or at least recently historically. But, um, but now having regular concerts out there and then bringing concerts, outdoor concerts to Westeril over the summer. So I think there's been more of a growth lately and more interest in bringing it to the people, bringing it to where people are. You can experience jazz in your neighborhood, and that might get you to experience jazz other neighborhoods after that, you know, when you get more of a taste for it. Sure. And so uh, with jazzcolumbus.com, you know, so many of my friends and colleagues refer to that, whether it be when the when the uh, weekly uh, article the column comes out that you put out on Wednesdays uh, comes out via social media or just by simply logging on and um, one thing that I found that it's it's provided uh, is is like you might find when you visit another city like Nashville or Chicago or, or Los Angeles whatever you can log on in a city like that and you can just say live music in that city and it's cool I've I've, I've heard a lot more people say um, that that come to Columbus that, oh I, I just typed in jazz in Columbus. And this website popped up that told me where I could go. So it, it seems like um, it has a benefit for, for, you know, let's say tourism or for outside folks that are trying to come in uh, and want to see some jazz. Have you heard any, any more feedback about that? Or did you anticipate that that would be something that it would provide? Uh, that's great to hear. I don't. I do not hear a lot of feedback about that. Um, I know I've helped a few visitors from out of town directly who had questions. But, um, I, yeah, I have. I mean, I've heard general feedback, obviously, that it helps no matter who's looking for for jazz and if you want jazz in columbus uh we're definitely the place to come so yeah it's always good to hear more feedback yeah and obviously you know mark is a bassist and uh, mark subel is a bassist who found he founded this website um are you a musician yourself do you perform uh not currently um i am a baritone saxophonist but uh that <laughs> that's a hobby that i've kind of run out of time for so mm. I could always play again. I still have one in the basement. But uh. Oh, wow. Uh, at least you have an inroad to the music that you can feel more connected than just, um, you know, uh, sort of just writing from that sort of separate perspective. You kind of have the feeling of having done it before. Right, right. Uh, I've never been an active jazz musician, but yes, I have been. I have played in a few local rock bands and... Um, it's helping people experience live music the way I've experienced before is definitely a good part of yeah. what I do. Yeah. And so with jazzcolumbus.com, you know, uh, uh, for those of you out there that don't understand that, that this is a totally a volunteer effort. I mean, you don't earn a, a, a huge salary <laughs> for running this website and neither did Mark. Um, right. So let's, uh, for, let's just say for, for, uh, for pretend here that the website could be resourced in any way to become, you know, whatever your grand vision is for the website in the future in order to be able to serve better or to do more or do different or, or more of the same. Uh, what do you see the direction for the website and uh, you know, how do you see it expanding or, or uh, taking on new facets? Well, I mean, as far as a grand vision, again, obviously there's always a constraint of how much time the musician or whoever else has to spend, but as far as, you know, more interviews and, Email is kind of a constraint, too, you know, that obviously that's limiting what people can say. And not every musician is, is uh, interested in, uh, in writing a lot. You know, that's a different, can be a different thing. So more, you know, audio interviews, maybe, you know, videos, that sort of th- video interviews would also obviously be great. I mean, currently, I mean, I do have some help. Uh, Richard Sanford, who's been an accomplished writer in general in town, um, He's been writing some previews for me, and I'm hoping, uh, waiting to hear, so uh, to get a uh, program off the ground with a local music school of uh, getting some contributions from students, uh-huh. of uh, you know, budding music students, of either reviews or previews. Uh, that has not taken complete shape yet, but that's something I'm hoping to launch here soon. 
you know, that's keeping it going is, uh, you know, always takes time. And so it's always great when I can find ways of uh, other people that are interested and have a, uh, their own interest in the jazz scene and their own way to contribute. And I'm, I'm always open. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Um, and so for a website like this, obviously, it's a it's a lot of work, as you've as you've talked about. But what a great. Uh, what a great resource to be able to kind of get young music students to come in and contribute, um, you know, not only from their perspective as players, but it also sharpens their craft to be able to come in and be able to write about the music in a way that that uh, sort of satisfies the purpose of, of painting a picture for the potential audience member uh, and also sort of. Uh, aligning your language around what the music's all about. Um, so that's, we found a jazz arts group that anytime we ask a young musician or, or um, student to sort of dive outside of their artistic uh, uh, practitioner skill of playing their instrument into writing or, or doing something that crosses into these, uh, these sort of marketing and promotion skills, it's always invaluable what it does for a young person to show uh, the amount of work that goes into uh, promoting your craft and to, into getting building a community uh, for music, and it seems like, from my perspective, Jazz Columbus more than anything has built a community for uh, the jazz scene online. Uh, you know, the Jazz Arch Group does uh, programs in the schools and, and puts on concerts. Dick Stan, Natalie's, Brothers Drake, all of these great venues are doing their part to present the music. But Jazz Columbus, to me, has been sort of the thread that helps keep a community online, keeps them active, kind of keeps them uh, connecting and looking for more information. Um, so with that in mind, uh, uh, if a musician or a club or someone wanted to contribute to the website or, or let's say get their information on there to be added to the musician list or to the venues list, uh, what does somebody have to do to do that? Well, there is a contact us page on the website. There is also there's a link for that shows instructions of uh, the best way to send. If you're looking to get listed as a musician or a venue, I mean, it's very simple, you know, of basically a picture and description, whatever bio you want and whatever contact information you want to provide. So there's simple instructions. I think it says attention musician club, musicians and clubs or yeah, on the website. So if you can read that and uh, then visit our Contact Us page, we uh, I'd be happy to uh, work with you to set up a page. Great. And uh, for those musicians that don't know, this is a great place to have your bio uh, listed and to be listed. And, and as you're looking at the website, it categorizes it by instrument. So uh, those of you out there that are multi-instrumentalists, uh, you, you may get listed a couple times. Right, right. <laughs> we can certainly list people a couple times. Yeah, so. yeah. But, but it's really nice because even, even from a booking perspective, if it's like man, I really need uh, uh, a pianist for this gig that's coming up. Or if you're a, uh, a we putting on a wedding and you want uh, you know, a guitar and bass player, you can find one of those by instrument and, and contact them. Uh, and it's a really nice, concise listing. Um, and one other thing that I've seen on your website is the uh, ability for someone to advertise on the site. Um, is that something that you're still doing? And, and obviously, being a volunteer uh effort that obviously costs some money, this might be a good way to generate a little bit of revenue to support the site. Right. Um, that is not entirely active right now. At least it's, we don't really have banner ads currently, but uh, looking to relaunch that soon. I've also been talking to a friend of mine who has some knowledge and current involvement in that regard. So uh, he's looking to help me out there. But if you, I certainly can offer uh, advertising via our newsletter that we've come up with a newsletter advertising solutions for now. So uh, that's, <laughs> that'd be the most direct way to advertise currently. And I'm certainly, certainly love to hear from people if there's any interest in that. Yeah. And I, and I obviously keeping in mind um, that an, an effort like this is a community driven thing. Once it gets off the ground, you know, it obviously takes the resources uh, to be able to support it. And, and you see so many things like that in Columbus. And I don't know if you've talked to others like this, but it seems like the community is able to uh, kind of, put all of their muscle behind something that they see valuable. You know, you see um, all of these venues that are taking off. You see um, some of the, some of the various online video series that have been coming out, like the, uh, the mug and brush series mm -hmm. that you yes. see uh, the video series online. Um, it seems like to me, Columbus is the kind of community that if they see something is worthwhile, they will put their resources behind it as a whole to try to push it forward. Yes. Yes. Um, and I've, I've definitely gotten involvement from uh supportive of my efforts but yeah i've definitely seen a lot of those other community efforts in town and you know when and obviously when they relate to my mission i try to share those too i mean especially the i mean mug and brush covers a lot of different genres but they definitely have had some great jazz musicians mm -hmm. in there so we try to share those when possible and uh other similar efforts around town have yeah have been 
successful as well. And that's always great to see. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to put you on the spot. So obviously you are, uh, you have to stay non-biased in order to write and, and cover the most ground in terms of the vast, uh,